Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the start of the second half. Um, Committee on Government Operations, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023, at three o'clock agenda. And as we kick off for the House bills, first up is House Bill 1192, House Draft 1. Um, first up is Legislative Reference Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair. Charles Party, number 8, Chief Director for Legislative Reference Bureau. We stand on our written testimony and written testimony. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Keith Hayashi, Superintendent. Good afternoon, Chair McKelvey. I'm Heidi Armstrong, Department of Education, and we stand on our written testimony and we've included comments in our written testimony. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see, Stephen Schatz, University of Hawaii. Written testimony available on oh, Zoom. Is that you, Stephen? There you go. Yeah, that's me available via mm -hmm. Zoom. Aloha, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm here on behalf of Deborah Halbert, our Vice President for Academic Strategy, and we stand on our written testimony offering uh, comments. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate you here being Zoom. We'll have you hang loose for just a second. Um, let me have some questions for you. Uh, next up, we have Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. I'm Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network a statewide coalition of youth serving organizations, we are in strong support of this bill. Youth civic engagement leads to reduced risky behavior, increased success in school, and leads to greater civic participation later in life. It gives young people opportunities to gain work experience, acquire new skills, and to learn responsibility and accountability all while contributing to the good of their communities. We think this is important because Hawaii has had a very low voter turnout in recent elections. Um, we coordinate the annual Hawaii Children and Youth Summit in which youth provide recommendations to legislators about what Hawaii needs to be a better place to live, learn, and work. Our youth voice this year is reflected in bills about flavored tobacco products and sexual abuse and trafficking training, as well as other issues. If this program is funded, we would work in partnership with the Public Access Room and the Department of Education to engage youth in civic affairs. And I'd like to close with a couple of quotes from students who have participated in, pa in a past Children and Youth Summit about why it was important to them. This was my first experience in attending a meeting with other youths where our voices matter. I want to make a difference, and attending the summit gave me the courage to step out and share everything I've learned with my fellow students. I know I will never stop speaking up for what is right. Alicia Estoy. I have always been passionate about the environment, but I never thought I could make a difference now. Thank you for providing that chance to speak out and give me someone to listen. This has been one of the few times that I felt like people listened to me. McKenna Anderson. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you so much, Judith. Uh, Lisa Ganoza, Chief Judge and Chair of PACE, Promote and Advance Civic Education Commission. Written testimony and support, Kat Brady, Community Alliance on Prisons. Written testimony, it says in person, but did not see her. Written testimony and support. Uh, we have several pieces of testimony from individuals who've submitted it in support. Cards, Pintor, Christy McPherson, and Andrew Crossland. We also have written testimony and support from Kylie, Ky, sorry for, I don't pronounce it right. Kylie Swan, or, yeah, oh, there you go. Right. Good, 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 sorry, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. McKenna, uh, sorry, McKelvey. How are you doing today? Doing good. <laughs> good evening. Chair, uh, my name is Kylie Swan. I'm a strong support of 118182, excuse me, because students in public school needs to learn how to submit testimony online or learn how to, 
to legislative process work or how the current bills that could matter to them are moving forward in the legislative process. Please pass this bill. I want to answer any question that you may have. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. I love to. I love to. Appreciate you being here for this. You get some robin eggs. Oh, thank you so much. Congratulations for being a part of the legislative I, I, process. I'll answer any question from you. No worries. <laughs> Glad you're here. It's help incentivize people to get involved and testify in front of the committee. Okay, that's all we have on the bill before us. HB eleven nine two HD one. Anybody in the audience wishing to testify? Um, go ahead. Aloha, Chair and um, the committee. <laughs> Melody Young testifying on behalf of CARES um, in strong support for HB 1192. Um, in court, so this uh, measure is requesting um, University of Hawaii, uh, UH Do, and the public access room to work collaboratively together in coordination um, with all the um, agencies involved to assign appropriate staff um, for the public access room um, in respect to the outreach and engagement program um, so that more students, elementary, middle school, high school, and college students can get equitable access um, to legislative resources and legislative um, so that they can get involved in the legislative process. Um, so, as you heard from the previous testifier um, from the Hawaii Youth Services Network, um, from the Hawaii Children and Youth Summit this year in October, um, I was also there as a volunteer planner and the Kiki Caucus's priorities were one, um, vaping, no smoking at school, and then two, also the environment and recycling. Um, and three, sexual abuse. So, you know, perhaps because there were a lot of um, student testifiers and, you know, we're about civic engagement, um, there could also be a coordination with um, the Kiki Caucus and the Hawaii Youth um, Children and Youth Summit um, to present, you know, civic engagement as a priority. Although, you know, they're involved in the legislative process, but they can also get other people involved. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Seeing none, I'm the only one here. I'll ask some questions. Uh, Legislative Reference Bureau. Get chocolate. You get some robins. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, just a background. Some of these questions I failed to ask in the first go around on the Senate version of this bill. So, how many full time permanent staff does the PAR have right now? Two. Two. Okay. None of which have any civics or educational background in terms of how to prepare or teach materials. Um, yeah. So. And then um, was PAR looking to, if we pass this, would you be looking to expand their duties and responsibilities through this measure or no, you would need additional staff that, with that kind of background? We would definitely need additional staff and I am thankful that one staff person is included, but frankly, for somebody who's really going to come up with curriculum development for pre-K all the way post-education, um, I would imagine you need more than one person focusing on that kind of development because um, what you would be preparing for like pre-k or elementary school kids is going to be vastly different i would think than high school graduate level um, so okay and the, do, does PAR already do community outreach into the schools and teach people about the legislative process? Yes, we, we already do that. And in fact, um, as I understand it from Virginia Beck, our, our coordinator over there, one of the main problems is when they try to contact the schools or DOE, there's no response. There's no one person to get in touch with. And so that makes it difficult for them, which is why we want to make sure there's somebody that they can connect with, with both DOE and UH, if we have to do this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I think that's it. 
Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And then for DOE. Right. So you heard the testimony of uh, LRB who runs PAR that they're right now trying to do this kind of outreach, but they're not getting a response from any of the schools. I mean, any comments in so far as that goes? Um, I, I heard that they didn't know who to contact within the DOE. I, I didn't hear that the schools weren't responding, but I-, I Who would they contact in the DOE? Because they're currently trying to do this program, so who would be the person? Right. We could we could establish a contact person for questions, um, and and we can coordinate that. Well, I think it's more about trying to actually effectuate the outreach, so more just than just answering questions. So right. Um, we don't have a person dedicated to this, and we fully support the the expansion of this room, of the opportunities that are available. We fully support that. Our concern is if we're going to be participating in the engagement and the outreach and being a true partner in that, we would need another body, right? We don't have any, we don't have a position um, specifically assigned to civic education. And we have one person in charge of social studies that serves 258 schools. Mm -hmm. So how many staff are in the department's Office of Curriculum and Instructional Design now? Off the top of my head, I don't know the number, but I can tell you that each in the curriculum areas, mm -hmm. there is one lead person. One person. Yes. Exactly. And uh, let's see, a couple of the questions I have here. So does the, DOE, does the DOE staff in this office now have the capability to create curriculum for this outreach program or no? We don't have a body, um, a, a person assigned to do that at this time, no. Okay, so, um, but isn't civics already part of the DOE curriculum and required for graduation? I mean, you have U.S. and history. It is, and, and um, we've recently adopted new social studies standards, and I can confidently say that civic education and community engagement is prevalent throughout the standards K through 12. So the standards do lend themselves to um, participating in these types of activities. So this open access to this room and however it can be developed to provide additional opportunities to our students would be welcomed. We would love to participate in that. Um, if we're asked though to help out with the curriculum or the strategies or the outreach, we would need an additional, we would need additional support to do that. Well, isn't there something called the Davis Democracy Initiative that's going on at Puno Hope School? Couldn't you yes. just use that and go ahead and make that part of this program with the public access? Um, we, the department does participate in that. Um, our social studies lead who is here, she, she participates in that as well. Um, that's another opportunity, um, but um, the, the PAR would be an additional opportunity for students um, to take advantage of. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate thank you. On this. And then I guess we must have lost Stephen. Wait. Are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Hey, how are you doing, I'm <laughs> sir? Um, I'm sorry. You sound so much like your brother. I feel like I'm addressing Congress. <laughs> uh, does the university offer any civic outreach to get students involved in the legislative process by way of student activities or clubs now? Yeah, but uh, I would say that that work is done sort of campus by campus, right? The curriculum and um, the engagement on that level would be done by the program leads at each of the 10 campuses as appropriate, right? So um, organized a, a bit differently in that the, the curriculum is not sort of um, owned by the system office. Okay. And then uh, let's see, does university offer classes that touch upon legislative process and how bills become law at this point? I'm sure that, that we do, yes. We do, okay. Okay, thank you for sticking around. We appreciate you um, being here to answer these questions. Thank you. Okay, um, I think that's all the questions I have on the bill. So with that, thank you so much for sticking around and, and answering them, I appreciate it. I'll take a deeper dive when we get on the Senate version. We'll move on to the next bill on the agenda, which is House Bill 964. First up, Let's see, yep, let's try to get it right. Yes, certification of documents, Lieutenant Governor's office. 
Good afternoon, Chair. Thank you, Riley Fujisaki, on behalf of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. We'd just like to stand on our written testimony in strong support with the proposed technical amendment. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. One moment, not so fast. You get to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so nice. Uh, try to be. Uh, Kenny Fink, Department of Health. Yeah, you should have been here, Kenny. You missed out on the eggs. Uh, written in support, Gerald Silva, individual, frequent flyer, and in opposition. Okay, that's all we have in 964 House Draft 1. Is there anybody else in the audience wishing to testify on the measure? Seeing none. Um, real quick question. Earn the robin eggs. <laughs> um, we blanked out the Senate version of the $10 mm -hmm. because of the issues raised by budget and finance. We noticed they didn't testify to that concern now. So do you think that the $10 raising it to that level would cover not only the costs that you're incurring now, but also future costs? Uh, yes, Chair, we do believe that the $10 uh, amount is appropriate for the price of the apostle and should be able to cover our costs. Okay. And that's based upon actual costs, right? It's not additional funding that would be coming in beyond the, the actual cost. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's based off of an average of what we expect to pay because not every case ends up being a, like a problem case that has to go back and forth between our office, mm -hmm. but we do have cases where we end up having to mail correction sheets back and then they submit it again and it still has an issue. And so those for those cases, the price would be You would keep cover. the residual, let's just say at the end of the year, you don't have that many different cases and there's an excess mm -hmm. you would keep the funds in that excess to add more positions for the program or what oh uh, i think we would evaluate it at, at, at the time um but we're envisioning the ceiling would match what our expenses are to cover the Got program it. okay yeah. thank you for that i appreciate thank you being here okay that's all we have on the measure so refill okay. refill right? there's a lot of testifiers today you know, missed out people by not being here um okay uh, next up on the agenda, we have House Bill 32, House Draft 1, and I should definitely save some robin eggs because we have nobody to testify on the bill. Anybody wishing to testify on this arcane measure to which there's never been an analyst prior? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the next one, House Bill 572. Again, Lieutenant Governor Sylvia Luke for designee thereof. Hi, Chair. Thank you. Riley Fuchisaki on behalf of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we'd just like to stand on our written testimony providing comments. Okay. Thank you thank so you. much, Riley. Appreciate you being here. And next up, we have Kirby Shaw, Executive Director of DCAB. Written with comments, Robert Cavaco, President of the SHOPO, State of Hawaii Organization of Police Officers. They are written in support. We have Douglas Meller, League of Women Voters Hawaii written in support, and Peter Fritz, individual from Florida, all the way from Florida, written in support. That's all we have on 572 HD1. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to testify? Seeing none, I don't have any questions of you, so happy Easter. <laughs> we'll move on to the next bill on the agenda, which is House Bill number 1206. First up, the Comptroller, Keith Regan. Chair Keith Regan, Comptroller for the State of Hawaii. I would normally have stood on my written testimony as submitted, but I really wanted some robin eggs, <laughs> so I decided to uh, approach. But uh, yeah, we do stand on our written testimony offering comments on HB 1206. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thanks so much, Andy. Some robin eggs. <laughs> Which I will share with my team. Thank you, yes, definitely share it with your team. They work hard. Okay, Curtis Lum, Department of Planning and Permitting. They are in opposition. We have late from David Arakawa of Land Use Research Foundation. They have written comments. And then we have late from Richard T. Bisson Jr., mayor of the county of Maui and know him well, and he's definitely not here in person. However, um, he has filed testimony with the committee in a strong opposition to the bill. That's all we received on 1206 HD2. Is there anybody in the audience wishing or Zoom land wishing to testify? Seeing none, we will move on to the next bill on the agenda, which is House Bill 1184, House Draft 1, again, the Comptroller, Keith Regan. Chair, we stand our testimonials. Okay, thank you so much. And next up, uh, Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator of the State Procurement Office. 
Good afternoon, Chair Bonnie Kahakoi. On behalf of the State Procurement Office, we stand on our written testimony in strong support. Uh, we did provide comments and recommendations for some revised language, mostly for clarity and style and formatting. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And you get some rather names. <laughs> okay, Jan Govea, University of Hawaii, written in support. Again, Richard Bisson, Mayor of Maui, sends written testimony in support. Andrew Kawano, Director, City and County of Honolulu, um, written in support. Um, we have Reed Mizui, President of A, let's see, sorry, AIAH. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Um, Reed Mizui, President, AI Hawaii State Council. Uh, we stand on our written testimony. Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, we also have, again, Gerald Silver, Silva, individual, written in all his opposition. Uh, we have late from ACEC-H, which is American Council of Engineering Companies of Hawaii. Okay. Uh, Silver. Uh, no. Um, no. Uh, let's see. We have a uh, day of written comments. And then Ernest Barrera, Assistant Chief Procurement Officer for the County of Hawaii, Department of Finance, who has submitted testimony in support. I believe that's all we have on this measure, 1184. Anybody else in the audience wishing to testify on 1184? Oh, wait, there he's there. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir, Mr. Barrera, if you're on Zoom. I apologize. Good afternoon, Chair, uh, members of the committee. Uh, Ernie Barrera, Procurement Chief of the County of Kauai. Thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony. I know, Chair, our testimony is awkward in the sense that it advocates adoption of the Senate Companion Bill. Uh, if I may just briefly explain, we have done that because we believe uh, the Senate version most closely aligns with the general uh, and substantial consensus that we've achieved with the professional procurements, uh, procurement professionals around the state, as well as the architects, engineers, and consultants with whom we've partnered uh, to come to some consensus with regard to this proposed measure. So. Uh, we are continuing uh, our interest to work with these individuals as we continue to work uh, to try to establish a more acceptable 304. And uh, I would like to apologize for my delayed testimony. We had technical glitches yesterday. Your staff is incredible, and I appreciate the help. Thank you very much. No problem. We're so glad you were able to come and join us. A model for neighbor islanders to jump in via Zoom. Uh, that's all we have on 1184 House Draft 1. Anybody else wishing to testify? If not, I also thank uh, Ernest for being here because he answered my question that I had. So we'll move on to the next bill on the agenda, which is, I believe, oh, sorry, here, House Bill 542, relating to procurement. First up, Keith Regan. Sure, we stand on our written testimony in opposition. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Bonnie Kahakui, Acting Administrator. Good afternoon. Chair, State Procurement Office, Stand on the testimony in opposition. Okay, thank you. Andrew Kawano, City County Honolulu, written in opposition. Candace Ito, CLB, which is Contractors License Board. They too are in opposition. Ryan Sakuda, Government Relations Director, General Contractors. Good afternoon, Chair. Uh, Ryan Sakuda, on behalf of the General Contractors Association of Hawaii. Uh, so the purpose of this bill is to reduce the number of bid protests regarding the subcontractor listing. So one agency described the scene at bid opening as general contractors will examine the subcontractor listing of bidders who submitted lower price bids and will photograph those listings. They'll then go to the professional vocational licensing website and check the licensing information for those subs with the hope of finding some technical flaws to protest on. So we're hopeful that this measure will address some of this. So the GCA and Subcontractors Association have finally compromised on a model that has the potential to reduce these protests. Uh, what we did was we looked at California's procurement code as that model, and this is something similar to what they've implemented. Um, this is also a recommendation that was given to the State Procurement Office by an independent study. Uh, so for these reasons, we hope that the committee allows the parties to continue the discussion to address this longstanding sublist issues. Okay, thank you so much. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's going to need him for your energy, given that people oppose the bill. Uh, next up, Tim Lyons, President of Subcontractors of Hawaii. Mr. Chairman, um, the Subcontractors Association is having a heartburn about this bill. Um, we've gone back and forth for 
I don't know how long, and we thought that perhaps we had arrived at a situation where we could support the bill. Um, however, um, we can no longer do that. Um, so um, we we just can't support it at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And perhaps you can support some rock. Oh, wow. There you go. Very good. Do I get one every time I say that? No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm a customer today. Uh, Jeffrey Masats Ma sorry, Masasuga, Painting Industry of Hawaii. Good afternoon, Chair. Jeff Masatsuba. I represent four labor management corporation funds. Mm -hmm. So that's painters, tapers, glazers, and floor layers. Uh, Chair, we're in strong opposition to this measure. Okay. You know, um, th there's no need for this bill. Hawaii uh, law already allows for this bill. And if we pass this bill, we're going to be reinventing the wheel. We're going to be creating two statutes that deal with the same issue. You know, I think this bill um, really, in our view, is really... Um, an attempt to open the door to bid shopping and that's why it's written that way the way it's written is not the way california law is written and uh, i i detailed that in my uh written testimony mm -hmm. uh, if there are any questions i'll try to answer them but uh for all these reasons we uh, urge the committee to defer this measure okay thank, thank you. you so much we appreciate it let's see we have uh danny cup Choi. Hawaii Operating Engineers Industry Stabilization Fund, written in support. We have Anthony Makana Paris, Managing Director of the Ironworkers. Hello, Chair McKelvey, good to see you. Good and the you. Roman Eggs. Yeah, can we go two um, left, so you're one of the lucky winners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on behalf of Managing Director T. George Paris, we um, respectfully oppose this bill. For, um, we stand on our testimony and would like to highlight some uh, matters why we still oppose this bill. First is um, that we believe this will allow for bid shopping where a bad prime contractor will be able to pressure subcontractors within that 24 hour window in order to actually um, force them to either go lower on their bid or swap their name out for someone else. Second is duplicative, as the previous testifier has said, we already have a statute to, co to cover immaterial issues. Third, it needlessly complicates the procurement process. And we've been working on procurement for, I don't know, at least I've been around for a decade and we've been working on this stuff. Um, this will just add another complication. Um, third, it encourages and rewards bad contractor behavior because now no longer the standard is you have to get your homework in on time. You can submit it halfway and then you'll get another 24 hours to make it up. So all we're doing is encouraging bad behavior. Four, it's like, um, it's unfair for those that actually get it in on time, complete and accurate. And continuing, like, we, we also are chasing a phantom problem because when we did the procurement task force, we clarified with the state agency that provided their actual data, not from California, from Hawaii, on how many bid protests are for subcontractor listings, it was less than 1%. So, we believe that this will definitely cause all of these problems. So we ask you to hold the bill. Mahalo. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, before you go, I'll help you on your drive back to the side. <laughs> all right. Um, we have Blake from Gino Sakara, oh, Executive Director of White Building Construction Trades Council. And he is written in opposition, uh, opposition. said he would be here, but I think he got held up. And that's all we have on 542. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to testify who did not call? We have Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, sir. Go ahead, Neil. Hi, uh, thank you, Chair McKelvey. You have our testimony from the Contractor License Board. I'm the yes, chairperson. Yeah, so I just wanted to, just a short commentary. Um, you know, the whole existence of the Contractor License Board is to, to prevent, to educate, uh, the people about unlicensed contractors. And this kind of opens the door for uh, some activity that was not intended. So I just want to uh, make that point. And I, I I don't need Robin's eggs. I work for peanuts. <laughs> we know. <laughs> well, you missed thank out you. on the drive. Well, thank you for being here, Neil. We appreciate it. And you're the last one. So we oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, anybody else wishing to testify on the measure? Questions of this one we've seen before? Remember? No. Nope. If not, we'll move on to the final bill on the agenda, 565 House Draft 1. First up, Keith Regan, Comptroller. Chair, we sent our testimony to my comments. 
Okay, and you've also offered a proposed amendment should we want to move forward. Correct. Okay, thank you so much. And Louis P. Salaveria, Director, Department of Budget and Finance, with written comments. That's all we have on the measure in front of us. Is there anybody else in the audience wishing to testify? Seeing none, remember question. Seeing none, we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we do all the time with these measures. All the measures on this agenda will be deferred for decision making to Thursday, March 16th at 3.01 p.m. because we have to confirm our deputy director advising consent um, in this room 225. Okay, so that concludes this hearing. Thank you all for being here and for all you lucky eight winners, have a great day. Thank you.